रखना उसके स्वागत में मुस्कान रखना बोल दो तुम मंग प्यारे आसमा हम बिछा देंगे तुम पधारो देश हमारे हम हवाएं सजा देंगे प्रकृति हो तुम सृजन हो एक विश्वास है उड़े आओ ना तुम खोल दो तुम पंख प्यारी आसमा हम बिछा देंगे तुम पधारो देश हमारे तुम पधारो देश हमारे हम हवाए सजा देंगे जहाँ तुमको चैन आए ऐसी दुनिया बना देंगे Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the plenary session once more. May I request all of you to take up your respective places and uh, we'll go ahead with our agenda once all of you migrate to your respective places. Once again, welcome all the honorable foreign ministers, the representatives from the UN, the delegates from the United Nations, representatives from almost 130 countries, and everyone present in, the, in this hall who have all played and is going to play an important part in making this COP13 on CMS a very, very successful one, not only during 15 to the 12, 22nd of February, but in the days to come, in the years to come. So, I would now go ahead with the agenda items. Agenda item number nine, report of the United Nations Environment Program. We shall now move to agenda item nine, Report of the United Nations Environment Program. I invite Mamadou Kane from UNEP to report on UNEP activities. Mr. Kane, please. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, uh, for giving us the opportunity to present the report of the Executive Director of UNEP to this 13th meeting of CMS. Uh, the report is available on the CMS. Can we have the volume up, please? Sorry, gentlemen. Sure. Yeah. In India, Khan means ears, so you are not being able to hear you. Hence, the volume needs to go up. Please, Mr. Kane. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I hope your cans are open now and that you can hear me properly. Um, thank you for this opportunity to uh, present the report of the Executive Director of UNEP to the 13th meeting of the Conference of Parties to the Convention on Migratory Species. Just for information, the report is also available on the CMS website in English, French, and Spanish as an information document with reference UNEP slash CMS slash COP13 slash DOC9. The report provides information on the administrative and financial management support provided by UNEP as well as the programmatic collaboration with the CMS Secretariat in support of the implementation of the convention since the 48th meeting of the Standing Committee, which was held in October 2018. The first session of the report provides updates on programmatic collaboration between UNEP and the CMS Secretariat, including on the implementation of the outcomes of the 12 meeting of the Conference of Parties held in Manila in October 2017. Just very quickly, uh, Mr. Chair, on the programmatic collaboration, the report provides information on several aspects, such as the support provided by UNEP for strengthening cooperation, coordination, and synergies between the Convention on Migratory Species and other biodiversity-related conventions. It also includes support provided by UNEP to the development of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework, technical and scientific support from UNEP WCMC, which includes synergies and partnerships, national reports, taxonomy and nomenclature, an assessment of the implementation of the strategic plan for CMS 2015-2023, and improving ways of addressing connectivity in the conservation of migratory species. The report also highlights recent developments and updates related to the implementation of the African Elephant Action Plan through the African Elephant Fund to which UNEP provides a secretariat. Efforts made in support in supporting the tackling of illegal killing, taking off, and trade in migratory species are also underlined, together with updates on the UN Information Portal and MEAs, Informia the Great Ape Survival Partnership, and finally, the protection of seagrass habitats. On top of this, Mr. Chair, and to demonstrate our efforts to promote more synergies and collaborative actions, I'm happy to report that the CMS Strategic Plan for Migratory Species 2015-23 is reflected and integrated into UNEP's medium-term strategy for the period 2018-2021 and the relevant sub-programs under the Program of Work 2018-2019. UNEP has completed the process of developing its Program of Work for 2020-2021, which is uh, approved by the fourth session of UNEA, the United Nations Environmental Assembly, in its decision 4-1 already. As part of that process, UNEP engaged with the relevant MEA secretariats, including CMS, to ensure that any recent trends and emerging issues were considered during the development of the program of work. We have a number of initiatives and projects in cooperation with, the rele with, you know, with, with relevance to CMS. For instance, we contribute to cooperation, coordination, and synergies among the family of biodiversity-related agreements by promoting a coherent and consultative approach to integrating biodiversity action into the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. This will be to produce significant transformational change, hopefully. Here, I'd like to also highlight our close collaboration with the Secretariat of the CBD, Convention of Biological Diversity, under the able leadership of Elizabeth Brema. On tackling illegal killing, uh, taking off and trade in migratory species, we are extending technical assistance and advisory services to countries in Africa, Asia, 
and the Pacific, Latin America, and the Caribbean. This is all to strengthen national legislation related to wildlife, including provisions related to the penalization of wildlife crimes. I would also like to acknowledge the contributions made to conservation by UNEP-led projects funded by the European Commission particularly, such as the capacity building program on MEAs in the African, Caribbean, and Pacific, and recently the African Elephant Fund. More information on cooperation with the UNEP WCMC is also included in the report in detail. Finally, Mr. Chair, the last part of the report provides information on administrative and financial management support provided to the Convention. On that front, UNEP is very honored to provide the Secretariat service to the Convention and remains committed to hosting the CMS Secretariat. UNEP continues to work to improve on the effectiveness of the administrative arrangements with MEAs, including CMS, and we have established a dedicated MEAs unit within the Corporate Service Division. UNEP has implemented the new grantor management module, which is a uh, program and finance system in all its convention secretariats, divisions, and regional offices, thereby standardizing uh, partners' engagement. The staff of the Secretariat of the Convention on Migrant Species have received training on the new uh, applications, which we hope has contributed to the successful engagement of the Secretariat with their partners. With this quick summary, Mr. Chair, I would like to thank you and remind the parties that a full report is available on the CMS portal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kane. Now I'll move on to agenda number 10, reports and recommendations of the subsidiary bodies of the convention. I invite the chair of the CMS Standing Committee, Mr. Oestin Storkensen, I hope I got that right, to report on activities of the Standing Committee, item 10.1. Item Mr. Storkensen, please. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the floor. This is the brief report by the Standing Committee Chair. There's been only one full Standing Committee since last COP12. This was Standing Committee 48 in October 2018. And consequently, we had two short ones, one directly after the last COP12 in October 2017, and again, Standing Committee 49 in November last year. This was due to the dates of this COP13 can therefore be an issue on how to realign the timings of both the Standing Committee and the Scientific Council meetings. In other words, will there be two or three meetings of these committees in the coming intersessional period? And at what time will they be conducted vis-à-vis -vis the next COP? As you know, Bradley Chambers, our former executive, sadly passed away last year while we relatively quickly had a replacement when Amy Frankel entered on duty in May 2019 as our acting executive secretary at that time. After COP12 in Manila, October 2017, we adopted a number of documents, including directed tasks for the Standing Committee, decisions relating to the program of work and the new budget. The task of the Standing Committee is important in the sense that our mission is also to give advice to the Secretariat on priorities when needed and to monitor the advancement of the tasks. It will not come as a surprise to those that follow the Standing Committee and its subgroup of budget and finances that we have had repeated discussions on budgetary issues over the past triennium. It's been a momentum building up till now, and I'm afraid that we are still not out of an uncomfortable financial situation. The Standing Committee and the Chair has had to grant drawdowns from savings and to give advice on how to proceed to solve the problems on the short term. This situation will of course be raised again during the in-session working group on the coming triennium budget here at the COP. I'm also, for your information, happy to report that we have complied fully with all tasks as directed to the Standing Committee by, by the different decisions. There were ten in all. <clears throat> Another important topic in the last triennium was the 40th anniversary of concluding the text of the Convention, 1979 to, to 2019. 
I'm pleased to report that the German depository graciously marked the event in Berlin with the Minister of the Environment and a number of other dignitaries attending from many embassies. Personally, I noticed the, the vigilance the German authorities show by offering to step up the support on recruitment of new parties to the Convention, an initiative both I and the Secretariat welcomes very much. We have had six new parties recruited since the last COP, a result of diligent work by many. I want to give all these new parties a warm welcome uh, to the CMS. Still, we have a long way to go as there are, there are many non-parties out there. However, I feel that we are on track with our tar targets and I am confident that many more parties will be added to the ranks of CMS in the coming years. As you know, the program of work 2018 to 2020, as adopted by the last COP, was ambitious. And uh, as you also know, the, that most of the activities are not funded by the Trust Fund. This means that they need voluntary contributions to be fully executed. There are voluntary contributions from many parties and NGOs, and I'm very grateful for this. The Secretariat has also taken on to start processes with many of the program of work listed tasks solely based on their own in-house capacity. This is something we should expect and possibly guide more than is the case today. Still, there is a huge discrepancy between the list of agreed program of work and what is actually possible to do. At the time of the Standing Committee 48, we only had voluntary funding amounting to 12% of the last, uh, or what the last COP decided as tasks for the triennium, 12%. I think that we had a sensible and doable selection of items that CMS should and could contribute towards or lead on. Either we must step up on the available budgets to comply with our own strategic plan or maybe we need a renewed discussion on how the Secretariat and the steer steering committees are working and our priorities, and not least how to collaborate with others. Collaboration makes us stronger and should be pursued much more. It is a difficult task to prioritize, I, I admit, taking into account that we are so many parties with many diverging wishes. Then we have the wishes in addition, we have the wishes by the Scientific Council and there are pressures from the world around us on what we should focus on. And there are also more emerging issues than ever before. Uh, there are also collaborative efforts with other relevant agencies and MEAs and so on. Maybe it's not an easy task to be the secretary taking into account all of this and not least administering this. At the same time, they also have an important role in guiding us and keeping track of opportunities and suggesting ways forward. One important issue over the last year was the role of CMS in the coming establishment of a post-2020 framework for biodiversity. Thanks to a CMS working group and many dedicated people, the conclusion was that we need to be succinct in our message and contribution. The term ecological connectivity was therefore chosen as our main focal area. It is an ele elegant choice in encompassing what CMS is about, while, we, while now the challenge is to concretize what connectivity is and find indicators. Then, of course, to liaise with all good forces to get the end results that we want in the coming CBD processes and setting our targets for the coming decades. Since last COP, we, had, we have seen very good initiatives by the Secretariat on what we now call the Review Mechanism and National Legislation Programme. It is an ongoing process, but if you ask me, this is truly a brilliant way forward in collaboration with other MEAs and agencies, and of course, the parties. I believe the time has come to be serious about surveying compliance and then identifying ways to assist parties in need. Another kind of cooperation of the last years have been the building of numerous interfaces with many relevant organizations, be it NGOs or relevant MEAs, including through synergies and partnerships. I think that CMS has been searching to find its proper position as a collaborative organization and it's gradually getting to grips with this. Still, we have some way to go and this is a topic that I would like to see more prioritized. 
Secretariat has been busy, as always, in the intercessional period with both assisting and collaborating with the CMS family instruments, collaborating with NGOs and UNEP. Serving the committees and following up on the implementation of the program of work are also important and time consuming for a very small secretariat. There are too many tasks to mention all of them, but one that I feel is remarkable. This was the fact that the COP12 brochure in an in-flight magazine won the Silver Award in the Best of Content Marketing Awards 2018 in the category Cover of the Year. I mention this because I believe that outreach activities is so important to engage the public and something I, I wish for all of us to scale up on. Finally, let me give a special thanks to the Secretariat, its staff for such dedicated and professional work. And I, I want also to give a special thank to Bradney Chambers for his exemplary efforts, which, as you know, came to such an abrupt halt. The new Executive Secretary, Amy Frankel, has also done very well since she joined the Secretariat in May last year, despite the challenges of coming on board in the run-up to this COP. We would neither be where we are without the strong support by the two main CMS committees, its working groups, the CMS family organizations, the NGO communities, and the many collaborative partners and donors. A big thank you to all of you. Since this is my last COP, and uh, I must ex express that I will miss to be in close contact with the Secretariat. Still, you will not probably get rid of me altogether, as I'm still planning to, to attend coming CMS meetings. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Soxen. We are very sure you're not going to migrate away from this great, great community. We we'll need your expertise. Uh, the report may be noted. I now invite the chair of the CMS Scientific Council, Dr. Fernando Spina, to report on activities of the council, item 10.2. Mr. Fernando Spina. Thank you, Chair. Thanks very much. It is my pleasure to report on the activities of, uh, of the Scientific Council and Sessional Committee of CMS. And uh, uh, yeah, thank you. So I will report on the period <clears throat> uh, from last COP. During this period, we had two meetings of the Sessional Committee in 2018 and in 2019. In uh, the first of these meetings in uh, 2018, uh, it was uh, meant uh, mainly to discuss and work on activities uh, of the Council and Sessional Committee in the intersessional period, and uh, it was mostly worked out in working groups on taxonomic groups based or issues. We were working on the program of work of the uh, sessional committee. The rules of procedure of the Scientific Council, this period has been a very important period these last years for the Scientific Council because, as you know, the structure has changed and, the, and also, the, in general, the rules of procedures have been revised. And uh, there has been discussion on the new COP-appointed uh, Council of Subject Areas, this revision which has been led by uh, Norel Montgomery from Australia. And we have also been discussing on, on contribution of CMS from a, a scientific council perspective to the program work of WIBES and uh, on this revised perspective of the concerted actions. Um, the second meeting took place uh, last autumn in Bonn. This was really a very intense meeting because, of course, it was the meeting before COP. So we had to take on board all aspects uh, from a scientific perspective related to all the heaps of documents that we all have in front of us now for this COP and for this coming week. So um, many aspects have been discussed. Of course, I won't go into details at all. 
but I mean, there are very important documents, including those which I have uh, briefly mentioned here, which have to do with uh, uh, listing uh, proposals and the scientific perspectives and criteria for uh, uh, listing proposals. Um, we have uh, represented uh, uh, CMS at a series of meetings. Uh, um, uh, CMS uh, secretaries uh, has organized a kickoff meeting for the start of the um, activities uh, to uh, uh, produce the, this atlas of uh, bird migration between Eurasia and Africa. Um, there was a global flyway summit, as you know, in Abu Dhabi in 2018, organized by BirdLife International, where we were uh, present. Uh, we took active role in the uh, IBES MEP meeting in, two in 2019. And um, there has been last week, and Narelle Montgomery was attending, an important uh, workshop, uh, the first out of three, on uh, the governance of taxonomic lists. This is a major aspect, as you know. We have been already involved in this, especially for birds, but this is an even more global uh, perspective. So uh, with this COP, um, uh, the adventure, and this is uh, written in capital and read not by chance, my adventure of chairing the Scientific Council of CMS comes to an end, and I think this was a good opportunity for me to launch some advert on the position of uh, Scientific Council chair. Uh, there will soon be another person uh, elected in this position, and uh, and I think it is uh, important for me to just advertise. And uh, this is really uh, an amazing experience. And already now I want to thank warmly uh, the COP who decided and CMS community in general and everyone for having offered me this uh, unique opportunity. The members of the Scientific Council of CMS are quite an amazing group of people in terms of uh, experience, uh, in terms of uh, um, subject areas, in terms of uh, people, how they are, these uh, experts and scientists from all over the world, and it is extremely stimulating having a chance to work with this uh, amazing flock of uh, people. Uh, another important aspect is that you are offered an opportunity of learning or trying to learn how to reach a consensus, how to reach uh, compromises through chairing uh, CMS uh, meetings. And uh, this has been my small uh, collection. I started with a, a COP of CMS in Roma just before I was uh, um, elected as chair of the Scientific Council, but then I had all the meetings during these nine years. Then I was chairing the, the first MOS for the Sharks MOU and uh, Iowa MOP 6, and also the, the overarching meeting for the Vulture um, Multispecies Action Plan. Uh, this also uh, allows you to learn um, uh, how to um, uh, get involved in different activities within the CMS family, and uh, this is just a, a, a list, a, a provisional list or a partial list of uh, the things I was involved with from the strategic plan and then to CISA, BBES, UNCCD, the SACRE gap, and so on so forth, and you really learn a lot also of species, maybe, who are not your uh, special target of your research. Uh, this also leads you to uh, get uh, stimulated to propose new initiatives, and um, I was able to seek funds in Italy and uh, to organize a series of initiatives uh, starting from 12, um, 2012, when we had this CMS strategic plan working group and also the meeting of the CSAB, and we organized also a first meeting ever in Italy on the economic value of uh, migratory species. Then we could have uh, uh, support to organize two different uh, workshops on connectivity, which were quite seminal to develop the resolution on connectivity, which has been approved at the last COP. Uh, I was lucky enough as to be involved uh, with uh, culture 
uh, animal culture a new perspective. I think this is really pure cutting edge from a CMS perspective. And I was able, uh, thanks to the support of the uh, Appenine National Park in Italy, to host uh, a workshop in, uh, in Parma last year. And two more workshops are going to happen this year in Parma, in, in Italy already with resources available, one on connectivity in May in the Po Delta and another one on culture in Parma again in June because this year Parma is the Italian capital of culture. And then of course I was uh, offered an opportunity to uh, be involved in the process which led the Italian government to pledge for the migration atlas. Um, last but not least, definitely, this offers you a possibility of synergizing your passions, and uh, uh, I got this idea of uh, proposing operatic uh, uh, concerts, uh, benefit concerts, to celebrate the World Migratory Bird Day. We, uh, this was something which uh, also Bradney liked enormously, and poor Elisa too. So we started in Bonn, and then we had concerts in Bonn, and then in Bologna, and, uh, and last year in Roma. So this is just from one of these uh, concerts uh, in, in Bonn. So uh, a key aspect, and this is just uh, the end of my presentation, however, is that you are offered the unique opportunity of working together and getting friends with the CMS Secretariat and the CMS family, which is really a family of friends, which, uh, and who deserve absolutely all my warmest thanks as you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Spina, and uh, Executive Secretary Amy, just let me know that you are also a fantastic opera singer. So I'm sure that hearing you sing, more birds will fly into Italy. Thank you so much. Uh, the reports may be noted, Amy. Next is agenda item number 11, statements. I invite the meeting to take up agenda number 11, statements. I would be grateful, distinguished delegates, if you could now turn your attention to document 11.1. .1. Document 11.1, .1, depository and host country. I invite the representative of the Federal Republic of Germany to introduce document 11.1. .1. Well, thanks, Mr. Chair, for giving me the floor. Dear colleagues, the Depository of the Convention, the Federal Republic, the Federal Foreign Office, has the honor to submit this report to the parties and signatory states of the CMS. Since the last conference of the parties, six more countries have acceded the, to the Convention. The Convention enters into force for the exceeding country on the first day of the third month after the country has deposited its instrument of accession to the Convention with the depository. The governments of the following countries have notified the government of the Federal Republic of Germany as a depository for, of their accession to the CMS with the effect of the following dates. The Dominican Republic at the 1st of November 2017. Bosnia and Herzegovina at 1st of December 2017. The Republic of Trinidad and Tobago at 1st of December 2018. The Lebanese Republic at 1st of June at, uh, in uh, 2019. The Republic of Malawi at 1st of September 2019, and the Republic of the Maldives at 1st of November 2019. I think this deserves a round of applause. As of 20th November uh, 2019, the parties of the Convention of the, of the CMS Number 130, 130. With its note, of, note verbal of 24th of January 2018, 
to the Federal Republic of Germany in its capacity as depository, the Czech Republic made a reservation of the amendments made to Appendices 1 and 2 as adopted on 28th of October 2017 at the 12th Conference of the Parties held in Manila, the Philippines, pursuant to Article 11, Paragraph 6 of the Convention, the amendment, amendments made to the appendices at the 12th Conference of the Parties shall not enter into force for the Czech Republic. With its note verbal of 15th of January 2018 to the Federal Republic of Germany in its capacity as depository, Australia made a reservation with reservation with respect to the inclusion of the following species in Appendix 2 to the Convention. Dusky shark, blue shark, and white-spotted wedgefish, pursuant to Article 11, Paragraph 6 of the Convention, the inclusion of the above-named species adopted at the 12th Conference of the Parties shall not enter into force for Australia. With its note verbal of 24th of January 2018 to the Federal Republic of Germany in its capacity as depository, the Republic of Uganda made a reservation with respect to the inclusion of the following species in the appendices or to the convention. Chimpanzee, lion, leopard, giraffe. Pursuant to Article 11, Paragraph 6 of the Convention, the inclusion of the above-named species adopted at the 12th Conference of the Parties shall not enter into force for the Republic of Uganda. With its note verbal of 23rd of January 2018 to the Federal Republic of Germany, in its capacity as depository, the Republic of South Africa made a reservation with respect to the inclusion of the following species to, in Appendix 2 to the Convention. Giraffe, African lion, leopard, blue shark. Pursuant to a tactical 11, paragraph 6 of the Convention, the inclusion of the above-named species adopted at the 12th Conference of the Parties shall not enter force for the Republic of South Africa. With its note verbal of 19th of February 2018, the Republic of Zimbabwe communicated to the Federal Republic of Germany in its capacity as depository a reservation signed on 16 January 2018 regarding the inclusion of the following species in Appendix 2 to the Convention. African lion, leopard, giraffe. Pursuant to Article 11, Paragraph 6 of the Convention, any party wishing to make a reservation to an amendment to the appendices must do so by notifying the depository in writing within a period of 90 days of the amendment being adopted. The deadline for making reservations to the amendments to Appendix 2, the reservation was signed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade of the Republic of Zimbabwe on 16th of January 2018. The Federal Foreign Office as Depository only received it on 21th of February 2018. Pursuant to Article 19 of, and 20 of the Vienna Convention on the Law and Treaties, also the reservation was made after the deadline. It may still be considered legal and deemed to have been accepted by the signatory states as of the date on which it was made if they have raised no objection to the reservation by the end of a period of 12 months after they were notified of the 12th Conference of the Parties, shall not enter into force for the Republic of Zimbabwe, subject to object objections by the signatory states. In its note verbal 
of 3rd of April 2019, the Federal Republic of Germany, in its capacity as depository of the Convention, communicated to the parties and signatory states of the Convention that, it is, that in its letter dated 6th of March 2019, the European Union raised an objection to the late reservation of the Republic of Zimbabwe regarding the inclusion of the following species in Appendix 2 to the Convention. African lion, leopard, giraffe. The letter to the European Union was received by the Federal Foreign Office on 6th of March 2019. That is, prior to the expir expiration of the 12 months deadline communicated to the parties and signatory states of the Convention in the note verbal of 12th of March 2018. Thus, the late reservation by the Republic of Zimbabwe is ineffective and inclusion of the above mentioned species in Appendix 2 to the Convention of, my, of the, to the CMS of uh, 23rd June of 1979 entered into force also for the Republic of Zimbabwe on 27th of January 2018. The Federal Republic of Germany is helping to recruit new members. Also, recruitment efforts are primarily and taken by the CMS Secretary in Bonn. The Federal Republic of Germany supports these endeavors. What is more, the Federal Foreign Office contact German embassies abroad, abroad will then provide assistance. For example, in matters relating to the signing and ratification of the Convention. The embassies are en hands also involved in the recruitment of new members. The Central African Republic is currently making arrangements to become part of the CMS. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, gentlemen from Germany. Amy, the report may please be noted. I would be grateful, distinguished delegates, if you could now turn your attention to item 11.2, outgoing COP presidency. I invite the representative of the Philippines to make their statement. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. The COP Presidency Report emphasizes on the regional activities undertaken in Southeast Asia with the Philippines as a member of several regional cooperations and partnerships on biodiversity conservation have better opportunities to promote the work of the Convention. The country remains to be the lone CMS member state in the region. In addition to the achievements I earlier outlined in my message, I wish to add the following highlights or summary of the CLP Presidency activities contained in the report submitted as document 11.2. Following the conclusions of the CMS COP 12, the Philippines reported to the Governing Board of the ASEAN Center for Diversity, or the ACB, on the significant results of the conference held for the first time in Southeast Asia. As a result, the ACB project is underway on effectively managing an ecological network of marine protected areas in the ASEAN region and is now supporting ASEAN members, countries in the management of ASEAN heritage parks, which are relevant to migratory species. On transfrontier conservation areas for migratory species, the Philippines is continuing to strengthen our bilateral cooperation with Malaysia for the management of the Turtle Island Heritage Protected Area, a transboundary protected area recognized to be the largest rookery of green turtles in Southeast Asia and the first transboundary marine protected in the world for green turtles. The Turtle Islands within the Philippine territory is designated as a marine turtle network site under the IOSEA MOU. In furtherance of the whale shark 
concerted action plan adopted the C during the CMS COP12. Five major whale shark aggregations in the Philippines are being monitored. Connectivity was established with Malaysia and Indonesia using satellite telemetry and photographic identification. In 2019, the Philippines became the second world's largest known population of whale sharks as investigated through photo ID one, with 1,750 individuals. We have prepared a draft conference paper at this COP seeking extension of the time frame of the concerted action on the whale shark to continue on the remaining action points for these species. Our experience on regional cooperation under the ASEAN, the Coral Triangle Initiative, and the East Asia Austral Asia Flyway that promoted the management of ecological networks through establishment of marine protected area networks based on the ecology of marine turtles, the designation of flyaway network sites, including marine protected area networks, presents clear approaches for connectivity conservation at the regional and national scale. We shall continue to pursue these regional initiatives to increase the manifestation of the Convention in our region. Lastly, the Philippines shall continue to support the connectivity principle in subsequent discussions under the CBD and in facilitating coherence and complementarity of migratory species conservation in shaping the work programs of multilateral environmental agreement to which we are a party. The Philippines is grateful to have taken more than ever a substantial role in advancing the cause of the CMS as COP president. Rest assured that we shall pursue the work we have initiated under COP12 presidency, especially championing migratory species conservation in the Southeast Asian region. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We have we've got a request from Israel. They want to make a statement. May I please request the representative from Israel to share his thoughts with us? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I actually asked for the floor on the previous uh, agenda item 11.1, um, and I would like to get this time to um, go back to that, if that's possible, please. Thank you. Yes, it um, is. Thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, document 11.1, the report of the depository, mentions quite extensively the use of reservations by certain parties after the COP. Uh, Israel would like to make a statement that we see reservations as a method of undermining the goals of this convention. And although the convention certainly allows parties to use those under certain circumstances, this has become more and more common after each COP. We realize that there is a document 27.4 that will be discussed later in the agenda on the issue of amendments to the convention and reservations. And we'll bring up this, I, this um, objection and our um, issue when that comes up later in the, um, in the agenda. We would also like to note that the reservations that are in effect are very hard to find, if at all, on the, CITES, on the CMS website. Um, even if you go into the Species Plus website looking at a certain species, it's not cross-referenced which countries have reservations about that particular species. If you go into the member parties, it doesn't list those reservations that are in effect for that party. And we would encourage the Secretariat to make this information available in a ready manner on the website so that other parties can see uh, more readily which reservations are in effect for which parties and for which species. Thank you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Your points are noted.
Before we move to the next item, I would like to invite His Excellency, Mr. Sergio Costa, Minister of Environment, Land and Sea Protection of Italy, to provide a few remarks. He is the co-president together with the UK of the 2020 UN Climate Change Conference. His Excellency, Mr. Sergio Costa, please. Thank you very much. Please, I speak in uh, Italian. Signor Presidente, Signora Segretaria Esecutiva e Autorità Tutte, rivolgo a tutti voi un caloroso saluto a nome del Governo della Repubblica Italiana. Innanzitutto ringrazio il Governo indiano e il Segretario della Convenzione sulle Specie Migratorie per avermi invitato e dato la possibilità di intervenire in questa importante sessione. Ho voluto fortemente essere qui perché questo è un momento iniziale e fondamentale di un importante percorso volto a sensibilizzare la comunità globale sull'urgenza di agire per la sopravvivenza dell'ecosistema Terra. Con questa conferenza per le parti così partecipata si apre il 2020, anno di importanza epocale per contrastare la perdita di biodiversità che si sta evidenziando in tutte le regioni del mondo a tassi senza precedenti e che pone tutti gli Stati di fronte ad una grande sfida globale che dobbiamo affrontare tutti insieme. La protezione delle specie migratrici è tema di particolare importanza per l'Italia. Infatti noi Abbiamo un Paese che è il luogo di migrazioni di un numero vastissimo di animali, come uccelli, pipistrelli, insetti e molte specie marine, quali pesci, tartarughe e cetacei. La migrazione è un fenomeno inserito nel vissuto degli italiani da sempre, che storicamente si è sviluppato anche in tradizioni di cattura e di consumo, ma che oggi, fortunatamente, viene sempre più riletto in termini di conservazione e di tutela. È sempre più diffusa, infatti, la consapevolezza dell'importanza degli animali migratori per la biodiversità e della necessità di mettere in campo misure di conservazione. Da questa antica base culturale scaturisce un legame forte tra l'Italia e la Convenzione sulle specie migratrici e un interesse privilegiato nei confronti del tema della connettività ecologica che consideriamo prioritario per il nuovo quadro globale sulla biodiversità nel post-2020, che sarà definito nell'ambito della COP sulla biodiversità ad ottobre prossimo. Vorrei ringraziare a questo proposito il Segretariato per il riconoscimento conferito ieri all'Italia per il progetto sull'Atlante sulle migrazioni degli uccelli nella regione afro-euroasiatica. L'Atlante sarà il primo realizzato su scala continentale, sulla base di un archivio di dati costruiti nell'arco temporale di oltre un secolo e grazie al contributo di tanti cittadini, amatori e a metodologie di analisi che un tempo erano impensabili. Questo premio è motivo di orgoglio per il governo italiano, ma anche fonte di grande senso di responsabilità. L'Atlante costituirà infatti un trampolino di lancio per la creazione di un Atlante globale sulla migrazione degli animali in una base di lavoro e di conoscenze per intraprendere azioni concrete per la tutela della biodiversità. In questi giorni si lavorerà intensamente e si affronteranno molteplici questioni qui, tutte cruciali per il raggiungimento degli obiettivi della Convenzione. Ci sono due temi che pesano significativamente sulle migrazioni degli uccelli in particolare. L'impiego massiccio e sconsiderato di pesticidi in agricoltura, i cambiamenti climatici. Nel caso dei pesticidi in agricoltura, l'Unione Europea sta affrontando il tema della revisione della politica agricola comunitaria in una direttiva europea che privilegi la lotta biologica integrale basata su insetti che si integrano nella catena alimentare dei parassiti in modo armonioso 
e proprio contando tra l'altro sull'azione degli uccelli stanziali e migratori. Non dobbiamo peraltro dimenticare che lo spostamento di miliardi di uccelli migratori ha una ricaduta fondamentale per l'ecosistema e per l'uomo, offre un servizio gratuito di disinfestazione e aiuta a controllare gli insetti nocivi come zanzare e parassiti delle piante. Per quanto attiene ai cambiamenti climatici, essi agiscono fortemente sulla biodiversità nel suo complesso e sulle specie migratorie di conseguenza. Gli animali migratori, come è noto, sono così dipendenti dalla stagionalità delle condizioni degli habitat nei quali vivono che si confrontano con situazioni profondamente critiche a causa proprio dei cambiamenti climatici. Anche grazie a ricerche condotte da esperti italiani è stato possibile dimostrare come il simbolo stesso della migrazione, per esempio la rondine, stia mutando le proprie strategie di migrazione e di svernamento in Africa, proprio per cercare di contrastare gli effetti che il cambiamento del clima porta nelle aree di nidificazione europee. Dalla sincronia tra la migrazione e la disponibilità alimentare nei diversi luoghi e nei diversi periodi dipende quindi la buona riuscita della migrazione e quindi la sopravvivenza delle specie. Questa perfetta sincronia può crollare a causa dei cambiamenti climatici che costringono le specie a modificare le loro rotte. L'Italia quest'anno è in prima linea sul fronte della lotta ai cambiamenti climatici, in quanto condivide con il Regno Unito la presidenza della COP26 sul clima. L'Italia in particolare organizzerà alcuni eventi preparatori alla COP, che realizzeremo a Milano dal 28 settembre al 2 ottobre e cominceremo con un evento dedicato ai giovani, che offrirà a circa 400 ragazzi provenienti da tutto il mondo la possibilità di elaborare proposte concrete da portare all'attenzione dei governi. A questo seguirà subito dopo la Precop, una conferenza ad alto livello finalizzata a sciogliere i principali nodi negoziali con alcuni paesi chiave e favorire la buona riuscita della successiva COP di Glasgow. E infine è previsto a Roma un evento dedicato specificatamente all'Africa, dove si affronteranno i principali temi climatici e ambientali. La nostra visione, che cercheremo di trasporre negli eventi che organizzeremo nel quadro della COP26, è che vi sono nessi innegabili tra i vari fenomeni climatico-ambientali. Il cambiamento climatico è causa di desertificazione e degrado del suolo, che a sua volta provoca ed accelera la perdita di biodiversità. A loro volta, soli degradati e biodiversità danneggiata indeboliscono l'azione di contrasto ai cambiamenti climatici basati sulla natura. Solo un approccio olistico che attivi su scala globale strategie coordinate e sinergiche su tutti i fonti ci permetterà di affrontare le grandi sfide ambientali, a cominciare da quella che affrontiamo oggi. È un dovere quindi che ritengo dobbiamo assumerci tutti insieme, qui e in questo posto attraverso il dialogo e l'accordo di tutti gli attori in campo a livello mondiale, affinché il sottile equilibrio tra uomo e ambiente necessario a salvaguardare il pianeta sia ripristinato e i giovani possano ereditare un mondo più sostenibile. Con questi auspici io rivolgo un sincero e sentito augurio a tutti voi di buon lavoro e rinnovo i ringraziamenti all'India. Grazie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Costa. We have received a request from uh, the International Avian, Re Avian Research Center, University of Nigeria. May we please request representative of Nigeria to share your thoughts with us, gentlemen. Would you speak, please? We're waiting for you. From Nigeria? 
You wanted to speak? You wanted uh, to say something? No, sorry, I didn't get the what to say because we because of logistics we we came It's a mistake. That's no problem. No problem. Yes, Thank you so much. I would be grateful distinguished delegates if you could now turn your attention to item 11.3 and 11.4 statements by party states and non party states in the interest of time i invite party states and non parties to provide written statements to the secretariat so that they can be incorporated into the proceedings however if a state or non party wishes to make a very short statement now i invite them to do so preferably on behalf of the region or a group of countries we received a couple of requests from european union south africa and united kingdom may i please request the representative from european union to share your thoughts with us thank you chair your excellencies distinguished chair distinguished colleagues ladies and gentlemen it is my great honor to address this meeting on behalf of the european union and its member states the european union and its member states express the deepest appreciation to the indian government for hosting this conference of parties in this super year of biodiversity the nature and spirit of india and its hospitality is deeply inspiring us we appreciate that the conference is organized in a venue dedicated to mahatma gandhi who has by his own example shown us that this world can achieve sustainability and prosperity if we as a society and individuals commit to transformative change We would also like to thank the secretariat for excellent preparation of this conference. We would furthermore like to congratulate Ms. Amy Frankel for her appointment to the post of executive secretary of CMS. We are confident that her energy and commitment to the conservation of migratory species will bring this important issue high on the political agenda. Mr. Chair, we would like to reiterate the findings of BP's global assessment that clearly show human actions threaten more species with global extinction now than ever before. We are looking at the existential threat with around 1 million species facing extinction, many of them being migratory. Decisions taken by this scope should address the urgency of the situation in Terralia by addressing the main drivers of biodiversity loss. CMS priorities and conservation of migratory species are an important piece in the new global biodiversity mosaic and we would like to acknowledge the hard work of secretariat in bringing CMS priorities higher in the global biodiversity agenda post 2020 global biodiversity framework must set out an ambitious plan to implement broad based actions to bring about transformation in society's relationship with biodiversity and to ensure that by 2050 the shared vision of living in harmony with nature is fulfilled to do so 2030 is a crucial milestone and the action that we implement in the upcoming decade will shape our future we welcome the ongoing work on cms on stimulating cooperation and active and long lasting engagement in protecting migratory species as well and conserving and restoring the ecological connectivity and integrity of ecosystems to support the natural movement of animals necessary for their survival and well-being only through the synergistic action and by effectively streamlining efforts of all international agreements and fora gathered under the joint global framework we can achieve the ever so needed change the involvement of all stakeholders stakeholders is of the utmost importance and we are happy to engage in further deliberations in addressing the important role ngo partners have in the implementation of the convention and we support the further work in strengthening civil society participation within cms processes mr chair as pollution is one of the main drivers of biodiversity loss 
addressing light pollution as detrimental factor for migratory species represent an important step in global conservation efforts for terrestrial, aquatic and avian species. We would also like to further contribute to CMS priorities by rec recognizing the issue of insect decline. Insects comprise more than two-thirds of total biodiversity of our planet, and our current data shows that many insect taxa in many parts of the world are declining rapidly. These devastating consequences for entire ecosystems, insectivorous migratory species, as well as for the global and local food security. We additionally welcome stepping up our efforts in conservation of global biodiversity by adding new species under the umbrella of CMS Convention Annexes. Mr. Chair, let me assure you that European Union and Member States stand ready and committed to work hard to make this conference a great success. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. May I now request a representative from United Kingdom to please share your thoughts with us. Thank you, Chair. On behalf of the United Kingdom Government, I would like to extend our sincere gratitude to the Government of India for hosting this Conference of Parties. This is an amazing venue in an amazing country, and we are hugely privileged to be here as your guests. I would also like to thank you, Chair, and the Secretariat for what I am sure will be a smoothly run and productive meeting. We fully appreciate how much hard work goes on behind the scenes to prepare and deliver these meetings. And finally, we warmly welcome our new Executive Secretary and look forward to working with you in the years to come. Distinguished delegates, earlier this month, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom launched our plans for the next global climate conference, COP26, which will be hosted in Glasgow this November in partnership with our friends, the Government of Italy. As the Honourable Minister from Italy has so eloquently stated, we face many challenges and opportunities as we make our way through this super year for biodiversity and climate change. We have heard this message coming through loud and clear over the last two days and in the opening addresses as well. And it is no bad thing that we will continue to hear it over this week. It is absolutely imperative that we use this COP as a springboard for the negotiations to come in CBD and UNFCCC. This is a key global moment and the UK is fully committed to making CBD COP15 and UNFCCC COP26 an absolute success. We can't afford not to. We must seize the opportunity to secure the global action necessary to safeguard the future of our ecosystems, our habitats, our species and our livelihoods, indeed for our planet. We need a plan of action that breaks down the artificial barriers between nature and poverty and between climate and nature. And it is through nature-based solutions that we can do this, harnessing human ingenuity to magnify the resilience and sheer power of nature. Nature-based solutions will be a key link between the agendas of COP15 and COP26. COP26 will be the first truly nature for climate COP. And the UK fully intends to lead by example by ramping up our efforts. Globally, we have committed to doubling our international climate finance to 11.6 billion and scaling up funding for nature-based solutions. Our Environment Bill sets us on track to improve the state of British nature year after year. Our land use subsidies are to become conditional upon good environmental stewardship. And we won't forget our precious marine environment as we create a new 500 million Blue Planet Fund to protect and restore priceless marine ecosystems. These will all benefit migratory species, and I can assure you there is more to come. I truly hope that the positive statements and sentiments we have heard and will continue to hear so far prevail in the negotiations to come and we can look back on 2020 as the year we made the right decisions, no matter how tough they are. That we can be proud we have safeguarded our biodiversity for future generations, and together that we welcome migratory species home. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, gentlemen. May I now request uh, the Secretariat to just make a few announcements uh, on the operation of the mics. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have a wonderfully sophisticated um, sound system in this room, and I would just like to uh, perhaps explain how the microphones work. You, if you want, wish to request the floor, you push um, the button on your the button that says speak, but it doesn't mean you will actually go live at that moment. You will only come up to our screens here as a request to speak, and then only when the chair gives you the floor will your, like, will your microphone um, become live, at which point it will go green. Oh, sorry, it will go red. Um, so press the button to get yourself on our list rather than raising flags. That would be much easier for us. Thank you very much. And also, could I just ask uh, parties and other delegates, if they are making statements, to please also send them uh, to the email address that's being um, conveyed to you all now on the, on the screens. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank Back you so you. much. Uh, the button does not, any of the buttons don't say speak. So there is an there is a icon of a gentleman or a woman with two semi-circles around it. So just press that and uh, you shall be heard, for sure. So, let's move on. Uh, yeah, we have uh, a request from Mongolia. May I please request representative from Mongolia to share your thoughts with us? Yeah, now it works. Um, thank you, Chair. And uh, it, is, it is great pleasure to take the floor on behalf of Asia region. The first, we would like to extend our heartfelt uh, thanks to the government of India for hosting uh, the COP in your co uh, wonderful country. And then the region is very proud of your leadership on starting the marathon towards the global biodiversity framework. We also, we also wish success to our meeting chair and all the chair, chairs of the working groups, which is going to establish very soon, and then also secretariat colleagues for facilitating all the discussions to achieve the common goals for wildlife and biodiversity, uh, mainly targeting national and regional globally. Asia also would like to especially congratulate Amy Franklin for her appointment, while expressing our firm belief that uh, your commitment and management will strengthen the voice and role of CMS into global arena. And then also, again, once again, uh, utmost appreciation to the Secretariat and whoever working um, behind uh, supporting the preparation and uh, documents for, we, for the COP. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we are glad to see the number of draft concerted actions and species and other uh, conservation initiatives that, uh, that, were, that are tabled at this meeting to tackle the multiple uh, is, uh, multi uh, sorry, of issues, including CMS priorities into post-2020 biodiversity framework, ecological connectivity, and emphasizing international cooperation to sustain the healthy nature for every single species, as well as to promote nature-based solutions and sustainability. Um, some very key concern from our region, or I would say priorities, that this COP should take into the account. The first one, in, to make our goal happen, it is indeed important to strengthen ambitious commitments and actions on strengthening the nexus on climate change and biodiversity. But also we, don't, we also need to remember other MEAs, not relating biodiversity, but um, uh, environment uh, uh, sustainability, including UN decade, uh, UN decade of ecological restoration, chemicals and waste beyond 2020 framework, which is going to adopt it in this superior 2020. Their contribution will be higher for uh, wildlife and natural conservation. So I would like to, uh, no, region, we would like to take, um, we would like to request Secretariat to work more on other MEAs, not only the biodiversity ones. In this regard, uh, also uh, the region, Asian region uh, wish, to, uh, wish all the member states and observers and partners to make decisions and to see the uh, resolutions and uh, the actions we are going to take very holistic, systematic and connected manner. Secondly, more importantly, 
the current f financial pact of CMS and its reflection to the program of works. As indicated at pre-COP meetings in 2019 by the Secretariat, and then also it mentioned uh, on, his, uh, on his statement of the chair of the stand, current standing committee, it is important to make a decision on um, our budget and financial arrangement. And I really, uh, sorry, uh, region, Asian region is really uh, hoping that financial arrangement will be higher concentration and then also taking in positive good mood on negotiation. During the extremium, Asia region would like to see very strong secretariat at the same time having effective monitoring and reporting system which always implies to the budget and uh, financial arrangement as well. And uh, I would like to express uh, on behalf of the Asian region, we would, uh, we would be supporting the uh, COP and then its negotiation and the, I would like to also, um, okay, let's stop here. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. We have received a request from South Africa. May I please request a representative from South Africa to share your thoughts? Thank you, Chair. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Africa Group, let me take this opportunity to thank the Government of India for hosting the CMS COP13, the wonderful venue and the hospitality. We also thank the Secretariat under the leadership of Ms. Amy Franco uh, for the hard work and dedication in ensuring success in the preparation of this COP. We also express sincere gratitude to those who made it possible for participants from developing countries to attend this COP. Africa notes the responsibility to conserve the declining and threatened migratory species and is committed to step up efforts to ensure the implementation of the convention. The threat to biodiversity in general and migratory species in particular that are raised in global assessments of the IPBES, the Global uh, Biodiversity Outlook, and other global assessments are an indication that we are in a state of emergency and need to act and think differently. Biodiversity is lost at an unprecedented rate with IPBES uh, predictions indicating a risk to lose a million species should we not embark on a transformative change. We are fast approaching a tipping point and to save biodiversity in general, migratory species and the humankind in particular, we need urgent action in all our respective responsibilities. Climate change impacts are very evident and affecting biodiversity, species, and people. Desertification, land degradation, drought impacts, and the increasing public health risk are very evident and are affecting biodiversity, species, and people. We heard yesterday that wetlands are being lost faster than forest, and they are, pri they are, pri they are the primary source of water we desperately need for our lives. In the Trondheim conference that was held recently in Norway, the biodiversity experts indicated very clearly that the house we are in is on fire and requires urgent attention. The 2030, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Sustainable Goals um, are providing guidance and require action. The post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework is under construction to provide further guidance. The strategic plans for migratory species, including those in other biodiversity conventions, are, are also available to guide our actions. We are sending a very clear message to the crafting of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework of the importance of ecolo ecological connectivity beyond protected areas, and these were a key element of the discussion during the high-level segment discussions yesterday. Our political principles yesterday indicated the importance of implementation of the plans we have in order to save migratory species. 
for urgent action, transformative change, and moving away from business as usual, we require more political buy-in, more resources, and the inclusion of the conservation and sustainable use of migratory species into our national priorities. We have plans that require adequate resources to implement. A commitment from, a political, from political principles whilst they are here amongst us is urgently required either in the form of a declaration or on how they are going to transmit the agency of the situation to action, what message and guidance they are sending to parties in the budget and additional resource mobilization discussions to ensure that by the end of this COP we, are at, least, we at least have a solution on how we deal with the emergency situation we are in. Mr. Chairman, as Africa, we strongly believe in the innovative ways of raising budgets and resources for the CMS, but do not think the suggestion of introducing the minimum payment is one of them for reasons we'll elaborate in the budget discussions. We need to be innovative in our thinking, take responsibility, move away from business as usual, be accountable, provide resources within our capabilities, do more and walk the talk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much, ma'am. I would be grateful, distinguished delegates, if you could now turn your attention to item 11.5, statements by CMS agreements. I invite the representative of the Agreement on the Conservation of Albatrosses and Petrels, ACAP, to make a very brief statement. Gentlemen. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Madam. Um, first, I'd like to thank the CMS Secretariat for inviting the ACAP Secretariat to participate in this conference. For me, this is the first CMS meeting I will be attending because I've only been in the position of ACAP Executive Secretary since December 2018. ACAP is part of the CMS family and I can take this opportunity to reaffirm our relationship with the Convention and our wish to collaborate with others in confronting the conservation crisis faced by albatrosses and petrels. As um, people will know, incidental mortality in fisheries continues to be the most serious threat to these species. And international cooperation is required to confront this. Despite the development of best practice advice, this is often not implemented. As uh, others have commented, implementation is essential, compliance is essential. ACAP contributes our expertise on bycatch mitigation to regional fisheries management organizations and they then um, incorporate this advice or some of it into conservation and management measures. We also seek to cooperate with organizations focusing on other taxa as often the same mitigation measures or similar ones will apply. Through our cooperation and um, our contributions of advice, many regional fisheries management organizations and national authorities have put in place some measures to reduce seabird bycatch. But as I said, the challenge is to ensure compliance. We have uh, observed and researchers have found that with the implementation of mitigation measures, there have been demonstrated reductions in seabird bycatch, and sometimes dramatically, which means that the conservation crisis for albatrosses and petrels 
can be successfully addressed. We have recently translated our best practice advice and updated it into several languages. And this is available to all on our ACAP website. The processes of updating, translating, and producing these products has been greatly assisted by a financial contribution from the FAO Common Oceans Project. ACAP is also continuing to review current population trends of ACAP species, priorities for land-based conservation actions, and key gaps in tracking and monitoring data. Like others, we see the communication of the conservation crisis as being essential, and we're exploring new communications approaches. In this context, ACAP advisory committee members decided to celebrate a World Albatross Day in 2020 on the 19th of June. Each country can undertake whatever activities it chooses to commemorate these wonderful birds. And um, for a more detailed statement, please have a look at information document 4.1. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I now invite the representative of the Agreement on Conservation of Cetaceans of the Black Sea, Mediterranean Sea, Contiguous Atlantic Area, ACOBAMS, to make a very brief statement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um I will be reading this statement on behalf of ACOPAMS, Executive Secretary Florence de Croix Comanducci, who couldn't be here today. Mr. Chair, dear Executive Secretary, distinguished delegates, dear CMS colleagues, the ACOPAMS Permanent Secretariat would like to thank the CMS Secretariat for the opportunity given to present this statement. Year 2020 is critical for the renewal of international commitments related to biodiversity protection, and CMS COP13 is one of the major steps that will pave the way for the adoption of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework in December. To this end, the ACOBAMS Permanent Secretariat contributed to the consultation process conducted by CMS in preparation of the development of this framework. A major recent achievement for ACOBAMS is the successful implementation of the ACOBAMS Survey Initiative. This unprecedented and unique collaborative project aimed to establish an integrated and coordinated cetacean monitoring system based on objective, robust and comparable data. The overall goal is to improve the conservation status of these species and their habitats in the ACOBAMS area. The data collected during the project is available to download on the ACOBAMS website for multiple research and conservation purposes. For the management of underwater noise, ACOBAMS supports the joint CMS ACOBAMS ASCOBAMS noise working group, and a new resolution on anthropogenic noise was adopted by ACOBAMS parties at MOP7 in November last year. This resolution invites implementation of CMS Resolution 12.14 on adverse impacts of anthropogenic noise on cetaceans and other migratory species. Regarding interactions with fisheries and in line with CMS Resolution 12.22 on bycatch, collaboration between ACOBAMS and the General Fisheries Commission for the Mediterranean has been strengthened, in particular through joint projects and activities aimed at monitoring and mitigating incidental catches of endangered species, following a multi-taxon approach. To conclude, the Permanent Secretariat of ACOBAMS very much welcomes the quality of the collaboration with the CMS family 
in particular with Ascobans, and is looking forward to continuing to develop together joint actions that will, in fine, achieve a favourable conservation status for cetaceans in the Mediterranean and Black Seas. Thank you so much. The statement will be noted. I now invite the representative of the Agreement on the Conservation of African Eurasian Migratory Water Birds, AEWA, to make a very brief statement. Merci, Monsieur le Président. J'interviendrai en français. Monsieur le Président, Excellence, chère participation à la COP 13 de la CMS, je voudrais tout d'abord remercier le gouvernement de l'Inde pour son accueil chaleureux. L'accord sur la conservation des oiseaux d'eau migrateurs d'Afrique Eurasie, AEVA, fêtera en juin de cette année son 25e anniversaire. Les collaborations avec la CMS se sont développées au fil des années et je vous prie de vous référer au document d'information 4.3 pour des exemples concrets, comme les plans d'action pour les espèces menacées ou encore la campagne de sensibilisation Journée mondiale des oiseaux migrateurs. L'AEVA souhaite contribuer à la mise en œuvre du cadre mondial post-2020 pour la conservation de la biodiversité, et ce, en collaboration étroite avec la CMS ainsi qu'avec les autres accords multilatéraux et le programme des Nations Unies pour l'Environnement. Nos efforts se concentrent en particulier sur la promotion et le développement du concept de connectivité écologique, à la racine même de la conservation et de l'utilisation durable des espèces migratrices. La dimension voie de migration implique une collaboration internationale et les parties à l'AEVA ont à cœur de proposer des outils de mise en œuvre concret, sur le terrain et souvent innovant pour atteindre nos objectifs. Nous soutenons ainsi pleinement les efforts de la CMS pour inclure la connectivité et les voies de migration dans le cadre mondial post-2020 pour la biodiversité. Les expériences passées, notamment celles de l'AEVA, mais aussi l'analyse des résultats des objectifs d'Aichi adoptés lors de la COP10 de la CBD, démontrent que la création d'un réseau d'habitats favorable, connecté entre eux par des corridors écologiques, est une nécessité pour assurer le succès de notre combat commun en faveur de la conservation de la biodiversité. Pour faire face aux nombreux défis que nous devons relever, les parties contractantes à l'AEVA, désormais au nombre de 80, ont adopté un plan stratégique ambitieux. Ce plan qui court jusqu'en 2029, vise à maintenir les populations d'oiseaux d'eau comme une composante vitale des écosystèmes et comme fournisseur d'une multitude de services écosystémiques, notamment aux communautés locales. Ce plan stratégique est complété par un plan d'action pour l'Afrique, car ce continent fait face à de nombreux défis et nécessite une mobilisation sans précédent et constante non seulement de la part des États, mais aussi de la société civile. Le cadre de nos actions est clairement fixé et les modalités de mise en œuvre déterminées, mais le manque de moyens pèse lourdement sur cette mise en œuvre. Nous espérons que cette super année 2020 mette enfin la conservation de la biodiversité au sommet des agendas politiques. Monsieur le Président, Excellences, chers participants, Soyez assurés de la pleine collaboration de l'AEVA au sein de la famille de la CMS. Que cette COP 13 soit un grand succès et que la mise en œuvre des résolutions que vous allez adopter contribue, au cours de la prochaine décade, à la reconquête de la biodiversité pour laquelle nous travaillons tous. Je vous remercie. I would now like to invite the representative of the Agreement on Conservation of Small 
Cetaceans of the Baltic, Northeast Atlantic, Irish and North Seas, the Ascobans, to make a very brief statement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ascobans was established in 1992 and has had a joint uh, secretariat with CMS since 2007. This means, for example, that the Executive Secretary of CMS also serves as the Executive Secretary of Ascobans. So I would like to congratulate Amy Frankel for her appointment to this position after already filling it in, acting, in an acting capacity since last year. Welcome, Amy, officially to the CMS family. Information document 4.4 reports on recent Ascobans activities. Some of the main accomplishments include the development of a species action plan for the North, Northeast Atlantic common dolphin, joint workshops with Ascobans dealing with marine debris and strandings, as well as cetacean necropsy practices, and the Ascobans anniversary publication titled European Whales, Dolphins and Porpoises, now available in bookshops. The mandates that CMS and Ascobans have for the conservation of cetaceans bring clear opportunities for close collaboration and synergies. As a member of the CMS aquatic species team, my role is at the nexus of all this. We also work closely with Ascobans on many issues. Several topics of shared importance, such as underwater noise, bycatch, marine pollution, ecosystem approach to addressing uh, pressures on small cetaceans, and the harbour porpoise in the Baltic, will also be discussed at the ninth meeting of the parties to Ascobans, to be held in September of this year's in, year in Brussels, Belgium. Ascobans looks forward to continuing this joint work with CMS and the wider CMS family to conserve small cetaceans of the Baltic, Northeast Atlantic, Irish and North Seas. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would now like to invite the representative of the Agreement on the Conservation of Populations of European Bats, Eurobats, to make a very brief statement. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. I will present the statement on behalf of Andreas Streit, the Executive Secretary of Eurobats. Your Excellencies, dear participants of the 13th Conference of the Parties to CMS, it is a great pleasure and honor for me to address you with this short statement, as much as I regret not being able to be with you for this very important conference. At it already was emphasis by previous speakers, this COP13 marks the opening of the key year for biodiversity, which is itself is facing an unprecedented level of threat, requiring urgent action to be taken. I'm happy to report that since COP12, Serbia has become a party to Eurobats, and that the deposit of the instrument of accession of Bosnia and Herzegovina is imminent bringing the total number of parties to 38. The non-party range states present at COP13 are kindly encouraged for intensify their effort to accede in the near future. I also wish to use this opportunity to express sincere thanks to the Principality of Monaco for having very generously hosted the very successful Eighth session of the meeting of party to Eurobats. The continuing weakness of the euro currency has resulted in a difficult financial situation for the Secretariat in 2019, and I would like to express utmost gratitude to the governments of Croatia, Luxembourg, Malta, Monaco, Germany, and Switzerland 
for making partly substantial additional contributions, thus enabling the agreement to continue the successful work. And before I conclude, I wish to once again extend my heartfelt congratulation to my dear colleague, Amy Frankel, for her appointment as the new Executive Secretary of CMS. And as AEVA Executive Secretary, I join this uh, congratulation to Amy. Since her arrival in Bonn in 2019, we have had an excellent collaboration across the entire CMS family, as we like to call it, and I very much look forward to, to continuing this together with Amy. Your Excellencies, dear participants, to all of you, I wish fruitful deliberation and successful outcomes of COP13, combined with my personal hope that this COP will help to lead to enhanced conservation efforts for bats all over the world, and also in this wonderful country, India. All migratory species of wild animals badly need your support. Thank you very much indeed for your kind uh, attention. Thank you, gentlemen. I now invite the representative of Uganda to please introduce the agreement on the conservation of gorillas and their habitats to make a very brief statement. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, since Uganda is taking the floor for the first time, allow me to start by congratulating the government and people of India for hosting this COP13 and for the excellent and unprecedented hospitality accorded to us since we arrived in this beautiful city of Gandhinagar, the land of Mahatma Gandhi. We would also like in the same vein, Chair, to congratulate you and your Vice Chair on this important role of chairing the COP13. As the chairperson of the meeting of the parties to the CMS Gorilla Agreement, Uganda would like to report on the progress regarding implementation of the agreement. This progress report has been submitted to the meeting as information document and it's on the meeting website as COP13 slash inf 4.6 and is available for participants to access. Now, the agreement on the conservation of gorillas and their habitats, known as the Gorilla Agreement, was concluded in 2007 under the auspices of CMS. This is the only legally binding instrument for the conservation of the gorilla in the world. The agreement promotes coordinated conservation efforts across the gorilla range states to maintain gorillas in a favorable conservation status or to restore them to such status. Seven out of the ten gorilla range states are already parties to the agreement. Since CMS COP12 in 2017, the gorilla agreement has continued facing severe financial challenges given that all of its parties are developing countries. These financial challenges have limited the activities of the agreement. However, with the generous contribution from the government of Luxembourg, the third meeting of the parties of the Gorilla Agreement was held from 18th to 20th June 2019 in Entebbe, Uganda. One of the most important decisions of the meeting was to enhance cooperation between the Gorilla Agreement and the Great Apes Survival Partnership, GRASP, in order to foster synergies and avoid duplication of efforts. This means that parties are now encouraged to nominate one focal point for both the Gorilla Agreement and GRASP. Also, parties decided to request scientific advice from the GRASP Scientific Commission instead of convening the Technical Committee of the Gorilla Agreement. It is expected, therefore, that joint activities, including outreach and fundraising, will be con conducted together with GRASP. 
in addition, as a way of strengthening cooperation and lowering meeting costs, the fourth meeting of the parties to the Gorilla Agreement is planned to be held in conjunction with the third GRASP Council meeting. The third meeting of the parties also reviewed the financial status and the institutional arrangements of the agreement and concluded that the CMS Secretariat should continue serving as the interim Secretariat of the Gorilla Agreement. In this regard, I would like to reiterate the commitment of the parties to the Gorilla Agreement as already ex expressed at the meeting of parties. Despite our determination, the current status of the fund does not allow the agreement to allocate necessary funds for the staff time provided by the CMS Secretariat. Therefore, on behalf of the meeting of the parties, we would like to invite the conference of the parties to CMS to approve the continuation of the CMS Secretariat as the interim secretariat to the Gorilla Agreement and to request the Executive Secretary to allocate necessary staff time and in-kind contribution to the agreement. Finally, we would like to take this opportunity to invite the CMS parties, non-party range states, donor governments, other organizations, and the private sector to make voluntary contributions to the agrarian agreement, either financially or in kind, to assist implementation of the agrarian agreement. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Really appreciate your efforts. Gorilla is indeed a very, very dear uh, animal, very cute. So we really, really appreciate your efforts. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, uh, thank, thank you for the agreements who are part of the CMS family and are working with the same objective to conserve many of the same CMS species. All the points have been noted. I would be grateful, distinguished delegates, if you could now turn your attention to item 11.6, statements by intergovernmental and non-governmental organizations. In the interest of time, I invite intergovernmental and non-governmental organizations to provide written statements to the Secretariat so that they can be incorporated into the proceedings. However, if an organization wishes to make a very short statement now, I invite them to do so, preferably on behalf of a group of organizations. May I request the South Asia Cooperative Environment Program to please share your thoughts with us. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, please allow me to congratulate and thank the government and people of India for hosting this very important COP and for the warm hospitality extended to us. I also thank to the CMS Secretariat for its excellent arrangements made for this very important conference. Soccer Vision Intergovernmental Organization established in 1982 by the governments of South Asia region, including India, to promote and support protection of environment in South Asia. Since long time, protection of biodiversity, including migratory species, has been one of the socket priority areas of activity, focusing on policy development and improving the capacity of its member countries in implementing their policies on biodiversity. One of the major initiatives of SACIP on this area is the adoption of marine and coastal biodiversity strategy for the South Asian Seas region. It was adopted at the sixth interministerial meeting of South Asian Seas program of SACIP in Dhaka, Bangladesh on November last year with the objective to provide a framework for cooperation. 
and collaboration amongst the five maritime countries of South Asia and other stakeholders for the application of ecosystem-based approach in managing coastal and marine resources that will ensure the conservation of the biodiversity and safeguard ecosystem services for the well-being and power to reduction of the peoples of South Asia. The strategy follows an ecosystem-based approach and is composed of six regional targets developed based on six main goals for the conservation of biodiversity and sustainable use of marine and coastal ecosystem in the South Asia Seas region. Noting that our exploitation and degradation of habitat are the most serious threats to migratory animals with climate change expected to exacerbate these effects, the first goal of this strategy ensures the provision of ecosystem services of the coastal and marine habitats for the well-being of coastal communities in the South Asian Seas region. Strategy. Accordingly, the strategy requires member countries to take a specific measure to ensure that by 2030 at least 10% of coastal habitats have been restored to pre-degraded status. Prevention of spatial extension constitutes the second goal of this strategy, which requires member countries to ensure protection of all endangered species, including turtles, marine mammals, shark, migratory shorebirds, and seabirds by 2030. This goal requires member countries to con conduct surveys of critically endangered and endangered species, their distribution and threats to identify to identify conservation measures needed and to develop comprehensive recovery or management plans for priority species and implement main conservation measures identified in the management and recovery plans. Recognizing the importance of regional cooperation, the strategy asks member countries to establish a mechanism for enhanced regional collaboration in shared natural marine and coastal biodiversity management. Mr. Chair, one of the major threats to marine environment in general and to marine species in particular is plastic pollution. Plastic pollution has emerged as the second most dire threat to the global environment after climate change. Plastic waste is a source of chemical toxicity to humans and animals. It has negative impacts on marine ecosystems, fisheries, habitats, and biodiversity. Therefore, urgent measures are needed to confront the threats of plastics. In this connection, I am glad to inform you that SOCEB, in collaboration with the World Bank, has initiated the implementation of a UST 40 billion project for a five 40 million project for a five years period on plastic free rivers and seas for South Asia to catalyze actions that reduce the flow of plastic pollution into South Asia seas. The project targets a long term goal of eliminating leakage of plastics into the marine environment across the South Asia region, which can only be achieved beyond the life of the project. The project seeks to catalyze transition transitions across the region towards a circular economy. I am hopeful that with the implementation of this project, the threats to marine species, including migratory species, reduced and endangered species are safer. SOCEB as a regional institution is ready to work with CMS and other biodiversity conventions on enhancing regional cooperation to protect biodiversity, including migratory species. Ecological connectivity requires enhanced collaboration at the, at the national, regional, and international levels. Therefore, I would like to request all parties to recognize the importance of regional collaboration in both Gondenegar Declaration on Priorities for Conservation of Migratory Species and the draft of the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Frameworks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. May I now request representative of Ramsar to kindly share your views with us.
First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the Government of India for hosting this COP13 of the Convention on Migratory Species. On behalf of the Convention on Wetlands, I welcome the attention given by the COP to the post-2020 biodiversity framework and for highlighting the need for cooperation and ensuring the contribution of the biodiversity-related convention for its development and implementation. Migratory species, whether birds, fish, marine turtles and mammals, depend on a vast and interconnected network of freshwater, marine and coastal wetlands as an important habitat for stopover, feed and breed. <coughs> Thus, the Convention on Wetlands has been collaborating closely with the Convention on Migratory Species. Contracting parties have established more than 2,300 wetlands of international importance or Ramsar sites that provide the largest network of protected areas. These are critical for migratory species. Further, parties have established 19 regional initiatives, some of them covering flyways, such as the East Asian Australasian Flyway, or waterways, such as the Amazon Regional Initiative, on which countries work across boundaries to manage shared ecosystems for nature and people. Yet, despite the importance of wetlands for biodiversity and the ecosystem services that they provide, they are disappearing three times faster than forests. 87% have been lost in the past 300 years and 35% since 1970. Wetland restoration, use and conservation thus must be at the heart of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. The 171 contracting parties to the Convention on Wetlands are committed and fully engaged in ensuring that the work of the Convention meaningfully contributes to the development and implementation of this common framework. The Strategic Plan 2014-2024 of the Convention is fully aligned to the Aichi targets and the mid-term review of the plan will ensure that it aligns to the new post-2020 framework. The Convention is also co-custodian with UNEP of the indicator of the Sustainable Development Goal on the extent of water-related ecosystems, drawing on the inventories and reporting of contracting parties that should also be an important ecosystem measure for the post-2020 biodiversity framework. We welcome this opportunity and look forward to further joining efforts among conventions and beyond to realize the common ambition to reversing the unprecedented biodiversity loss. Thank you. Thank you so much. The points have been noted. I would now request CITES to please share your thoughts with us. Thank you, Chair. Distinguished delegates, I have the honor to speak on behalf of the members of the Liaison Group of Biodiversity-Related Conventions, the heads of the secretariats of the CBD, CITES, CMS, the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, the International Plant Protection Convention, the International Whaling Commission, and the World Heritage Convention. We thank the Government of India for hosting CMS COP13 and for their exceptional arrangements and hospitality. The Liaison Group serves as a platform for the Convention Secretariats to exchange information to enhance national implementation of each convention while promoting complementarity and synergy in their implementation. We would like to emphasize the important contributions of the CMS Secretariat to the BLG and to thank the CMS parties for providing it with this mandate. Please allow me to use this opportunity also to congratulate Amy on behalf of the BLG on her appointment as Executive Secretary of the CMS. 
Welcome to our old friend, now in her new role. We commend CMS and its parties for their selection of the COP theme, which aligns well with its continuing contributions to the preparation of the new framework throughout its ongoing process. We welcome the attention being given by this COP to cooperation and synergies among biodiversity-related conventions, including in the context of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. The IPBES global assessment and other recent assessment reports highlight the stark deterioration of the world's biodiversity and health of ecosystems. They stress the need for transformative change to restore and protect nature. They are also clear that business as usual is no longer an option. And yet, it is not too late to achieve such change. Cooperation across our conventions will play an essential role in this. The links and complementarity between our conventions are many. The, contribu the contribution to the conservation and sustainable use of migratory species and their habitats by World Heritage Sites, wetlands on international importance and protected areas established in implementation of the CBD provides one such example. Acting under the authority of our respective governing bodies, our secretariats have sought practical ways to enhance links for the implementation of the conventions. The joint program of work between CITES and CMS secretariats, cooperating on species and issues of common concern, contributes to the achievement of complementary objectives of both conventions. Cooperation between the secretariats of the International Whaling Commission and CMS in developing an online whale watching handbook addressed a request by the parties to both treaties. The long-term collaboration between the Secretariats of the Convention on Wetlands and CMS promotes concrete mechanisms for synergies, for example, through the Ramsar Regional Initiative for High Andean Wetlands and the CMS Memorandum of Understanding on High Andean Flamingos. These are just a few examples. Our conventions, individually and collectively, have an essential role in tackling the drivers of biodiversity loss at all levels. The post-2020 global biodiversity framework provides a unique opportunity to serve as a unifying framework that builds on the strengths of each convention and reflect their priorities and contributions. It can contribute to achieving the objectives of each of the conventions, including the conservation and sustainable use of migratory species and their habitats. It can also promote synergies with other global frameworks, including the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, to which each of our conventions makes an important contribution. In this regard, we recognize the importance of priorities for the new framework that have been identified by CMS. One, attention to addressing ecological connectivity and to endangered and threatened species. Two, the importance of international cooperation and its implementation. Three, commitment to further enhance cooperation and synergies in the implementation of the related conventions. And four, the importance of integrating objectives of each of the conventions in the national biodiversity strategies and action plans for its implementation. We shall therefore continue to work together to support the development of a post-2020 global biodiversity framework that can harness such mechanisms. We shall also foster strong collective ownership and support for its coherent and effective implementation after its adoption by CBD COP15. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. May I now request IUCN to kindly share your thoughts with us. International Union for Conservation of Thank you, Nature. Chair. IUCN would like to thank the government and people of India for generously hosting COP15, sorry, COP13 in this wonderful state of um, Gujarat. I um, congratulate Ms. Amy Franco on her new appointment as a CMS Executive Secretary. 
IUCN has collaborated with CMS for many years and regards CMS as a key international partner. CMS's many agreements are important instruments to address the threat to migratory species and maintain the ecological integrity and connectivity of their habitats. We look forward to even closer collaboration in the future. The IPBES Global Biodiversity Assessment has made it very clear that the planet is in jeopardy. In 2020, this year, there is a short moment where the world can choose to respond to this nature emergency through the development and adoption of a new post-2020 global biodiversity framework. IUCN welcomes the structure of the zero draft framework, particularly the inclusion of the five high-level goals, including a goal on species. IUCN has proposed alternative wording for this goal that to ensure that it drives action to halt species declines by 2030. IUCN also proposes a new target to support emergency action for species. These five goals have 20 action targets for 2030. IUCN argues that these action targets must add up to achieve the five high-level goals and the goals must add up to achieve the mission. Every target must deliver the action necessary to attain the goals. To help the world achieve such an ambitious high-level species goal, IUCN is developing a global species action plan, working with many partners, including CMS, scientists, Ramsar uh, conventions, and others, we aim to bring together in one document all the work that needs to be done for species, together with all the tools and guidelines available to support this challenging task. Please contact us if you would like to get involved in this. IUCN stresses that the post-2020 global biodiversity framework must be a framework for all, for the Rio conventions, biodiversity-related conventions, all governments, and all stakeholders. IUCN stands ready to collaborate with CMS parties, other governments, and all other stakeholders to support species conservation action and ecological connectivity in the post-2020 global framework. Finally, we hope to see you all at the IUCN World Conservation Congress in Marseille, France in June this year to further discuss the development and implementation of the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. Thank you, Chair. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Uh, I would just like to steal one line. Uh, I would really want to thank everyone on behalf of the Government of India and Government of Gujarat for the wonderful, kind words that you have showered on us. It has really been a very, it's a big, big pleasure for us and your kind words makes us even more happy and uh, determined to do it even better any time next we get a chance to do it. So uh, the next is Ocean Care. I would request a representative from Ocean Care to kindly share your thoughts with us. Distinguished Chair, Delegates, dear CMS family, Ocean Care is excited to be attending this CMS COP13 and wish to thank the Government of India for hosting this important meeting in Gandhi Nagar within the state of Gujarat. The biodiversity crisis and species loss is a brutal reality, leaving us often helpless, frustrated, angry, and in some ways paralyzed, almost impossible to believe that we, as a collective species of Homo sapiens, are capable to turn the tide and speed up the efforts to bring back the balance. Connectivity, as the theme of this COP, as a concept reflecting upon new governance approaches and reconnecting with wild animals and nature, couldn't have been selected more timely. But will it be enough? The conventional migratory species is a rare jewel. 
in the world of multilateral environmental agreements. Emerging topics have been addressed before they became mainstream. Decisions have been passed to progress conservation and turn the described trend that is a reality today. But at the heart of real change is that such decisions are implemented and become an integral part of enforced management actions. By adopting the review mechanism and launching the national legislation implementation procedure, you are equipped with the tools for more effective conservation action. However, we are all well aware that progress made cannot be categorized as satisfactory compared to its original purpose. CMS is the convention that shall provide species specific guidance towards, towards the CBD's post-2020 process. The CMS family has so much experience to offer which should be explored once hopefully the new High Seas Treaty governing biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction is in place. An example for the beauty of guidance the scientific community offers towards governance processes is the impressive work undertaken under the important marine mammal area scheme. Others are how to address underwater noise or how to react to the global drivers that result in local issues such as aquatic wild meat. These are just a few examples. CMS has the potential of taking the lead in global and measurable species conservation efforts. On behalf of Ocean Care, as well as our colleagues from Wild Migration, Margie and Jeff Prido, who have contributed so much in the past two decades to wildlife conservation and the CMS programs, but can't be with us this time because they've lost their home to the wildfires on Kangaroo Island and face an existential crisis as a consequence of global warming. But we still have hope that this COP marks a new form of connectivity with nature, a connectivity which is based on working in partnership, a partnership which makes us use of the synergies civil society offers to the CMS family and makes it integral part of new governance approach. Where can we launch this necessary process if not in the region where Mahatma Gandhi was born, the person who taught us the concept of Satyagraha? Thank you. Thank you so much. You made some very important points. May I now request uh, Born Free Foundation to kindly express your views. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we thank the Government of India for graciously hosting this Conference of the Parties and the Secretariat for all its hard work in preparation for this meeting. Born Free is proud to have become a CMS partner organization in 2018. We very much embrace the values and progressive ambitions of this convention, which offer vital components for the resolution of the crisis facing biodiversity. We look forward to engaging on the issues of key interest to us during this important conference of the parties, particularly those focused on terrestrial mammals and many of the cross-cutting issues the COP will be considering. In particular, we welcome the engagement of CMS with the development of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework and encourage the CMS family to promote ecological connectivity and other key values and work streams of this convention through that process to ensure the adoption of a robust and effective framework at the CBD COP later this year. We have posted our most recent uh, conservation report as Information Doc 31. This report contains details of our conservation programs, many of which have direct relevance for CMS species and issues, and we encourage interested delegates to access the document. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Uh, I would now request Young Naturalist Network YNN, to please make your... Respected Honorable Chair, I would like to express my gratitude on behalf of Young Naturalist Network to the Government of India for organizing such big CMS COP and wonderful management. I would like to congratulate you, sir, on your election of President of CMS COP 13. We congratulate Madam Amy Fangley for her appointment as Executive Secretary of CMS. 
I thank you, Chair, for giving me an opportunity to share our view on COP13. Considering the time matter, we submit our full statement in written format to Secretariat. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. It's nice to see a young naturalist network. I hope you never grow old and keep the same inspiration on, <coughs> gentlemen. Our next uh, would be Wildlife Conservation Society. I would request your representative to kindly share your thoughts with us. Thank you very much to the Government of India, the State of Gujarat, and the Secretariat for the tremendous organization of this meeting. You'll be very pleased that I'm going to be very brief. You're probably going to hear too much from me over the week. I just want to note that WCS, the Wildlife Conservation Society, takes a science-based approach to the protection of wildlife and wild places, working in more than 60 countries, including work on many of the migratory species on the CMS appendices. We have a long history of partnership with CMS, including the signing of a formal cooperation agreement uh, 13 years ago. We've shared our policy briefing for this meeting by email with all of your focal points, have copies available at the wonderful WCS India booth, and here at our table. Our views are based on the best, scientific, uh, best available scientific and technical information from our field programs around the globe. Decis decisions made by you, the parties, over the course of this meeting will have profound implication for the implications for the future of species conservation. We look forward to meeting with all of you and to advancing this cause and the bio conservation of biodiversity in general. In conclusion, I hope to be able to congratulate all of you at the end of the meeting on the progress you have made. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. All the statements made have been noted by the Secretariat. I would now like to invite the meeting to take up agenda item number 12, report of the Secretariat and agenda item number 19, implementation of the program of work 2018-2020. Distinguished delegates, I now invite the Secretary to report on its main activities, implementing the program of work since COP 12. I would request CMS Executive Secretary, the very popular Amy, to kindly give us the statement. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to present just a summary of uh, some of the many activities that the Secretariat has been able to carry out under its program of work 2018 through 2020. Uh, due to the interest of time, I will not uh, cover every single item, but there is a document uh, and more information that uh, has been provided. Uh, first, as be has been stated by the Standing Committee Chair uh, earlier today, uh, the the program of work 2018-2020 was very ambitious, reflecting all mandates falling under the responsibility of the Secretariat, as well as those requiring its support and amounting to almost 72 million euros, which excludes staff costs and other costs covered by the core budget. Of this, approximately 45 million euros was estimated for the full implementation of the joint CMS CITES African Carnivores Initiative. The financial support generated up to November 2019 for the implementation of the program of work amounts to almost 10 million euros, representing 14 percent of the total required. Despite the significant financial gap and the reduced time for implementation, since we have still one more year of that program of work to go uh, this year, Many activities have been completed or have been progressed with fewer resources than estimated and at times with the Secretariat's in-house capacity. I'm just going to, as I mentioned, uh, go through a few different uh, examples following the program of work from COP12 that was approved at COP12 uh, as exemplary examples of, of what has been done. So first under the topic of executive direction and management. 2019 was an important year for the Convention, which celebrated its 40th anniversary, 
as well as the 10th anniversary of the CMS Office Abu Dhabi. Contributions to the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework has been a very uh, busy agenda item for us. We've been actively engaged both through uh, CMS, the family, as well as parties and partners uh, in the development of the post-2020 framework, produced inputs to all stages of the process so far. COP13, its stakeholder forum, and its high-level segment all, all will address or have addressed this topic, and it's an opportune time to help ensure that the new framework embraces CMS priorities fully. The national legislation program was launched during this time with the issuing of a questionnaire and the preparation of inventories of national legislation. The review mechanism for CMS has also been launched. The template for reporting a possible implementation matter is publicly available with the intention of assisting and supporting parties that face challenges to comply with their obligations to protect migratory species. For national reports, a new template was prepared by a working group. The 2017-2019 reporting cycle has been completed with the highest number of reports submitted. A total of 93 reports were received and published, and 79 were received in time to analyze to inform future decision making. Under the topic of implementation support, and scientific advisory services. As I've mentioned earlier, uh, we have a report that was called for for the review of the conservation status of migratory species. Without funding, the Secretariat nonetheless used its own internal resources and expertise to produce a preliminary review of the conservation status of migratory species covered by CMS appendices. It is a stepping stone towards the production of a flagship report for CMS. While the preliminary nature of the review suggests caution in drawing conclusions from the report at this stage, areas for its further development have been identified and are proposed to the COP for consideration. This is the first time in the Convention's history that such a report has been presented to COP. The Eurasian African Bird Migration Atlas was prioritized as a module of the Global Atlas on Animal Migration. Thanks to a generous support from Italy, work started in 2018 in partnership with the European Union for bird ringing and is currently ongoing. The final product is expected to be ready in 2021. On climate change, the Secretariat has been working on the development of a series of fact sheets aimed at illustrating actual and projected climate change impacts on selected migratory species and some of their critical habitats. Eleven fact sheets have been developed and fact-checked by external experts. And I've read them, and they're excellent. On the area of implementation support, aquatic species, bycatch. CMS is collaborating with BirdLife International on a project on bycatch of seabirds and sea turtles in West African industrial fisheries, working towards adopting an ecosystem approach to migratory species conservation. In the area of biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction, the CMS Secretary has been involved or been involved through partners uh, in the process in New York on the BB&J uh, biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction negotiations and on underwater noise with the International Whaling Commission on whale watching and on other topics such as the contribution of whales to ecosystems and with aquabombs and ascobombs on underwater noise. In addition, meetings under various MOUs including sharks, Iosea, and dugongs have also taken place. In terms of implementation support under, for avian species, the illegal killing, taking, and trade of migratory birds in the Mediterranean region. The CMS Intergovernmental Task Force, MICT, funded by the European Commission as part of the Champion Program, undertook several activities, including the implementation of the scoreboard to assess the progress in combating illegal killing, taking, and trade of wild birds. 
were responses from 30 out of a total of 56 countries were analyzed. The results were tabled for the joint meeting of the Bern Convention Network of Special Focal Points and the CMS MIC in May 2019. The next assessment was launched in February 2020. In the area of implementation support terrestrial species, the Joint CITES CMS African Carnivores Initiative had its first meeting in November 2018 with 31 range states present. The meeting drafted revised decisions for each of the four species covered by the initiative, namely the African wild dog, cheetah, leopard, and lion, to be submitted to CITES COP18 and CMS COP13. A dedicated program of work is being developed for the initiative and a junior professional officer is being funded by the government of Germany, Germany to support the implementation of the initiative. The Central Asian Mammals Initiative. Progress was made with re respect to the implementation of the CAMI inter alia through supporting concrete conservation activities, convening workshops and developing key documents such as the Central Asian Mammals and Linear Infrastructure Atlas and the study to identify transboundary conservation hotspots for CAMI. A new program of work 2021 through 2026 was developed at a range state meeting hosted by Mongolia in September 2019. There are many more examples of the work that we've been able to carry out even without the full amount of funding and many of these meetings, by the way, have happened since I arrived in May. So indeed, it's been an extremely busy time. And I want to thank uh, all of the team of the Secretariat and all the parties and partners involved in these activities uh, for your support. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Frankel. We really appreciate all the hard work that you have done. Uh, thank you, distinguished delegates. We will now adjourn the plenary and uh, I will hand over to the distinguished chair of the committee of the whole, which is also called CAO. Thank you so much. Thank you.
के खोल रखना उसके स्वागत में मुस्कान रखना बोल दो तुम मंग प्यारे आसमा हम बिछा देंगे तुम पधारो देश हमारे